on today's episode of Pop History Podcast. Spider Nan is at it again. Is lemon juice really the key to clean dishes? And Kiss is tired of making all this money off their party rock anthems. They want to be taken seriously. Let's kick it! It's time for another episode of Pop History Podcast, which opens a chronological time capsule of the music, movies, and television memories of our past. If you are a fan of nostalgia, a child of the 80s, or just a pop culture historian, stay tuned for your lesson in pop history. Now here's your host, Jay Jackson. Billboard ranked them, AT40 counted them down all those years ago, and now Pop History Podcast is taking you on a trip down memory lane. This time we're counting down the top 10 Billboard Hot 100 singles for the week on November 15th, 1981, along with plenty of great movies, TV, and other news for you. But first, let's get to the music. Number 10. Although it has earned some respectable ratings in its first season, the new police drama Hill Street Blues has yet to crack the weekly top 30 TV shows, but the theme song by Mike Post seems to be doing well on its own. Cracking into the top 10, here is Mike Post with the theme from Hill Street Blues. of that because I was just way too sleepy for kick off the show today and um, <clears throat> that was Mike Post with the theme from Hill Street Blues featuring Larry Carlton this was the second top 10 hit from Mike Post in 1976 his theme from the Rockford Files also hit number 10 on the Billboard singles chart Post would also go on to compose numerous TV themes so many that rock band The Who poked a little fun at him in 2006 with their song Mike Post theme Let's look at the news around the world this month. Buckingham Palace announces that Princess Diana is expecting a baby this June. The princess reportedly told another young wife that she had never heard about morning sickness before her marriage and that she is already fed up with it. President Reagan declared the economy must be rescued from years of government mismanagement and that the nation needs to stiffen its spine and not throw in the towel on the government spending cuts. Meanwhile, the nation's unemployment rate rises from 7.5 to 8 percent. First Lady Nancy Reagan begins her new anti-drug crusade. She says that parents need to take some of the blame on drug addiction and advises them to get tough, even if it means losing your child for a while. She told members of the National Federation of Parents, I think for a long time parents weren't involved. They shifted to the schools or the police or the government, anybody but themselves, because it took time, it took effort. It's not pleasant. On Memorial Day earlier this year, Chicago man Spider Dan Goodwin climbed all 110 stories of the Sears Tower in the Windy City, despite strong winds and firefighter in interference. Now, nearly six months later, Goodwin is at it again, this time taking on the 100-story John Hancock building in Chicago, then the world's fifth tallest building. Spider Dan dodged firefighter hoses and grappling hooks to the cheers of hundreds of supporters. The firefighters broke out the windows of the 38th floor, blocking Goodwin's path with grappling hooks and sprayed water on the side of the steel and glass skyscraper during their attempt to stop him. Eventually, Chicago Mayor Jane Byrne called off the Chicago Fire Department and let Goodwin climb at his own risk. He made it. Those people randomly freaking out on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange might appear like they're on drugs to the random person, and it appears many of them actually are. Syndicated financial columnist Dan Dorfman says that cocaine use is readily available on the trading floor. 
Dorfman also notes that cocaine, reportedly selling for $50 per half gram, is priced far more than the current price of gold. Look out, world! Here comes Ford Mustang. Yes, sir, no, sir. Got me on the go, sir, but quitting time. The different situation. I never take vacation. Ford Mustang, one beautiful way to turn high mileage into high excitement. Look out, world! Here comes Ford! Here comes Ford! Here comes now! Here comes Ford! Introducing New Style Shampoo with different scientific formulas for different kinds of hair. Style 1, scientific. a shampoo that deep cleans oily hair and scalp. Style 2, scientific. a shampoo that moisturizes dry, brittle hair. Style 3, scientific. a shampoo that adds body to fine, limp hair. Style 4, scientific. a shampoo that lightly conditions normal hair. Get the scientific solution to your hair care problem. New Style Shampoo. Scientific, you know. <laughs> Number nine. The early 80s were full of theme songs rising up the charts. And this one topped the charts earlier this year. This week, it's down to number nine. Here is Christopher Cross with Arthur's Theme, The Best That You Can Do. Once in your life, you find her. Someone who turns your heart around. The next thing you know, you're closing down the town. Wake up and it's still with you. Even though you're left, you're way across town. Wondering to 
That's Christopher Cross with his second and final number one single, a song which earned him an Oscar for Best Original Song. When the film Arthur was remade in 2011, the producers enlisted indie pop band Fitz and the Tantrums to record a cover version of the song. We have a few films premiering at the local Cineplex this month. The latest slasher film Prowler hits theaters. It is quite uneventful, but the effects by Tom Savini stood out in the film, so much that some of the scenes were cut in the German version due to its gore. Back in 1973, a 16-year-old hopeful actress who would later be known as Bo Derrick takes on the lead role in the film Fantasies. The film would be shelved and she would begin an affair with director John Derrick, later marrying him. When she reached international success after the film 10, this film was finally released to theaters this month with an R rating and promotion focusing on Derek's sexuality. Mm-hmm. Monty Python comedy troupe member Terry Gilliam begins his second career as a filmmaker this month with the release of Time Bandits. Michael Palin helped with, out with the script, but other than that, Gilliam produced, directed, and wrote this film himself and got his Python cohort John Cleese to star in the fantasy film, which Gilliam later called the first in his trilogy of imagination. The film also cast Sean Connery and Shelley Duvall. It would be a big hit, earning $40 million in the U.S. on a $5 million budget. Jamie Lee Curtis is in yet another slasher film. This one is titled Road Games, and it was originally released in Australia in June, but finally hit the U.S. this November. Warner Brothers and Looney Tunes gather together a compilation of classic cartoons with a few new bridge segments, calling it the Looney Looney Bugs Bunny movie, and puts it into theaters. The true story of aircraft hijacker D.B. Cooper is taken and fictitiously expanded upon in the film The Pursuit of D.B. Cooper, with the bulk of the film taking place after Cooper parachuted off the plane and landed on the ground. For those that don't know, the name D.B. Cooper is an alias name invented for this person, as he was never caught nor identified after he stole $200,000 from a Boeing 727 airliner in 1971. The film stars Robert Duvall. What a time it was. It was a time when a nation lived out its wildest fantasies. When a sexual obsession triggered the murder of the century. It was a time bursting with life, passion, and rebellion. When a man's pride held a city for ransom. It was the beginning of an incredible time. When the famous and the faceless made history together. Bad time. Good time. Rag time. Set in the early 20th century, Ragtime is based on the 1975 novel, which also takes real people of that era and puts them in fictitious events, much like the D.B. Cooper film. The film stars legendary actor James Cagney and Elizabeth McGovern and features many actors in their first, if not one of their first, film roles, including Jeff Daniels, Fran Drescher, Samuel L. Jackson, and John Ratzenberger. It would become a critical sensation with eight Oscar nominations and six Golden Globe nods. But the audience wasn't there. The film only made about $20 million on a budget of over $28 million. Number 8. Don't call him a one-hit wonder. Rick Springfield returns to the top ten this month with his follow-up single to Jesse's Girl. Here is I've Done Everything For You.
That was Rick Springfield taking a song originally recorded by Sammy Hagar back in 1978 and putting his own spin on it. It was his second single from the latest album, Working Class Dog. That was I've Done Everything For You. Kenny Rogers is making a label jump from CBS Records to Liberty EMI. This came just after Rogers filed a $44 million suit against his old label in dispute over royalties from previous albums. Record shop owners are taking a stand against this new thing called the Home Music Store, a newly proposed cable satellite system which would allow potential record buyers to buy the music they want via satellite and then be able to record the music at a predetermined time from the service directly to a cassette. It would eliminate the need to visit the local record shop altogether. Some record companies are already against this decision, including CBS Records, who announced they will not take part in this new technology. While sitting in Tom's Restaurant in New York City, young singer-songwriter Suzanne Vega composes the song Tom's Diner. The song would first be released as a track on the January 1984 issue of Fast Folk Musical Magazine, and would later be featured on her 1987 album Solitude Standing. Number 7! With another soft rock hit, here are the ever-romantic Graham Russell and Russell Hitchcock, collectively known as Air Supply, with their latest. Here I am, just when I thought I was over you. On my own I've tried to make the best of it alone I've done everything I can Sorry, that was uh, Air Supply with Here I Am Just When I Thought It Was Over You. To prevent confusion, this song was originally released under the title Here I Am on the album, but was retitled Here I Am Just When I Thought It Was Over You for the release of the single, so the song would not be confused with their number one hit song, The One That You Love, which contains a lyric, Here I Am The One That You Love. Got that? 16-year-old model and movie star Brooke Shields sobs on the witness stand while talking about the experience of having Gary Cross photograph her nude in the bathtub at age 10. The photos, some of the most controversial ever taken, show Shields nude in the bathtub wearing makeup and covered in oil. They were originally to be used in the magazine Little Women, but were also sold to Sugar and Spice, a Playboy publication. Magic Johnson says he wants to be traded from the L.A. Lakers because he and coach Paul Westhead have their differences. Soon later, the Lakers fire coach Paul Westhead, but the team's owner Jerry Buss has contended that he was unhappy with the coach's performance and was planning on firing him anyway. I'm not the same crazy coach who used to storm around the sidelines yelling at the officials. I've learned to relax. 
and I drank light beer from Miller. Do you know that light's got a third less calories than a regular beer? And listen to this. Light doesn't fill me up. Besides that, light tastes fantastic. Oh, sure, there are a lot of other beers around, and you can drink any one you want. But let me tell you this. For light beer from Miller. I Everything you always wanted in a beer, out. and less. As I was saying, I don't care what anybody else... That was John Madden for Miller Lite. These recent beer commercials featuring celebrities of the sporting world have been all the rage lately, but you might notice that you won't see any active players in these ads. That's because the federal government has stepped in in the mid-1950s and prohibited active athletes from promoting alcoholic beverages. Rising comedian David Letterman might have had a flop in his daytime television program, but he didn't have Johnny in his corner that time. Now NBC late night host Johnny Carson has become a big fan and will co-produce a new talk show for Letterman, which will air each night after Carson's Tonight Show starting in February. In a recent study released by the publishers of World Almanac, tennis star Billie Jean King has topped the list of the most influential women of the year. Also on the list were Nancy Reagan, Jane Fonda, Katherine Hepburn, Barbara Walters, Mary Tyler Moore, and others. Just in time for Christmas, Walt Disney Home Entertainment releases a number of their films on VHS, Beta, and or Laserdisc, including Bedknobs and Broomsticks, Old Yeller, The Shaggy Dog, and Alice in Wonderland. For the Thanksgiving weekend, Time Bandits continues its reign on the top of the box office charts for its third straight week. It also appeared that many families must have come out for the hit action-adventure film Raiders of the Lost Ark. The summer hit film rose up to number two in its 25th week since its release. Number six. At number six this month is the Little River Band with their latest single. Here is the Night Owls.
love beer but hate calories, watch carefully. This mug holds 12 frosty ounces of Olympia Gold light beer and only 70 calories. Now, how much beer would you get if you wanted only 70 calories of Michelob light or natural light or Miller light? That's all you'd get. Quite a difference. There's only one leading light beer that gives you this much refreshment and only 70 calories. Richer, smoother, slow-brewed Olympia Gold. For people who love beer but hate calories, it's what light beer was meant to be. Now it's time for another edition of our TV theme trivia. This new show, which debuts this month, has a title song sung by its main character. Can you name it? Well, I'm not the kind to kiss and tell, but I've been seen with fair up. I've never been with anything less than a nine. So fine. I've been on fire with Sally Field, gone fast with a girl named Bo. But somehow they just don't end up as mine. It's a death defying life I lead. I take my chances. I die for a living in the movies and TV. But the hardest thing I ever do is watch my leading ladies kiss some other guy while I'm bandaging my knee. I might fall from a tall building I might roll a brand new car Cause I'm the unknown stuntman That made record such a star I've never spent much time in school But I taught ladies plenty It's true I hire my body out for pay Hey, hey I've gotten burned over Cheryl Teague's blown up for Rocky Welch But when I wind up in the hay, it's only hay, hay, hay I might jump an open drawbridge or Tarzan from a vine Cause I'm the unknown stuntman that makes Eastwood look so fine President. But I got the best first ladies Some days I've got them as far as the eye can see Ooh-wee. A morning dive with Jackie Smith I crash in the night with Cheryl But in the end, they never stay with me I might fall from a tall building So Bert Reynolds don't get hurt I might leave a mighty canyon So he can't kiss and flirt well, that smooth talker's kissing my girl, I'm just kissing dirt. Yes, I'm the lonely stunt man that made a lover out of birth. I like to put my purchases on one monthly bill. Then I can pay for them with just one payment. Visa's got it. I prefer the Visa card that lets me pay with money from my checking account. Or savings account. And I don't even have to write a check. Visa's got it. I like to have a choice. There are times when we want to spread our payments over several months. Visa's got it. Have you ever run out of cash? Visa, I can get cash at banks around town or at 90,000 financial offices around the world. Visa's got it. We prefer Visa traveler's checks. Visa is known around the world. And if our traveler's checks are lost, Visa has a worldwide refund system. You can have it the way you want it with Visa. Now you can choose the way you want to pay with Visa. We're sending these lemons to your supermarket, but not to the produce section. Now these lemons are going into a new dishwashing liquid. New sunlight with real lemon juice for extra cleaning power on baked on foods. Look, we soaked half of this casserole coated with baked on gravy in sunlight, half in the leading brand. After equal cleaning, still gravy here, but the sunlight side is already clean. Get all your dishes sunlight clean. New sunlight with real lemon juice for extra cleaning power. Do you know me? I'm a famous chef, the Chef's Blend Chef, and I'm here to introduce my new meat taste Chef's Blend. The only dry cat food with four great meat flavors in every bag. Tasty turkey, lively liver, 
hearty beef chicken too nutritionally complete four great flavors new meat taste chef's blend it's the meat taste cats love well then smooth talkers kissing my girl i'm just kissing dirt yes i'm the lonely stunt man that made a lover out of dirt Starring Lee Majors, Douglas Barr, and Heather Thomas, The Fall Guy made its debut this month on ABC with cameos by Majors' then-wife Farrah Fawcett and actor James Colburn. Lee Majors became a star in the 1970s action show The Six Million Dollar Man, so return to TV was inevitable. This time he stars as a Hollywood stuntman who moonlights as a bounty hunter. Lee Majors' character Colt Seavers uses his skills and knowledge of stunt effects to capture fugitives and criminals. The Hollywood setting allowed for the numerous big-name cameos throughout the show's five-season run, including Robert Wagner, Milton Berle, Linda Evans, Tom Selleck, and Lou Ferrigno in its first season alone. During the first season episodes, the show opened with a voiceover by Lee Majors explaining the precarious life of a Hollywood stuntman and why one needs to moonlight to supplant their financial income. The theme song you heard was performed by none other than Lee Majors himself, and is titled The Ballad of the Unknown Stuntman. Over on the Peacock Network, after the success of Little House on the Prairie, Father Murphy is a new series set in the 19th century that makes its debut this month, as well as the crime drama McLean's Law on NBC. Over on CBS, Kevin Dobson stars as former NYPD officer Jack Shannon and Gerald McRaney stars as Jameson Parker in the new detective series Simon and Simon. So wait, who was Simon and Simon then? Hmm. Also debuting this month on ABC are the firefighter series Code Red starring Lauren Green, the new police drama Strike Force, which will raise some controversy this season with its excessive violence, on Sunday mornings, This Week with David Brinkley debuts. And a couple of more shows which won't last long are the thriller anthology series Dark Room and the sitcom Open All Night. Every month we count down the top ten hits as determined by the official Billboard survey of the records you bought and the ones that DJs were playing across the land. Number five. Number five. Number five. Last month, Bob Seger and the Silver Bullet Band released the live album Nine Tonight. From that album, here's a song that is new to the rock band, but was originally recorded by soul singer Otis Clay in 1973. Here is a Bob Seger and the Silver Bullet Band with Trying to Live My Life Without You. It's an old Memphis song, old Memphis song. I used to smoke five packs of cigarettes a day. It was the hardest thing to put them away.
Bob Seger and the Silver Bullet Band with a live track, Trying to Live My Life Without You. The song would reach number two on the mainstream rock charts, but only peak at number five this week on the Billboard Hot 100. Production of Different Strokes has been shut down for several weeks. Four shows have been taped, but the problem is they don't feature star Gary Coleman, who hasn't reported for work. He wants more money. NBC pays him $30,000 per episode already, and says it won't hand out profit shares in midstream to actors who didn't share the financial liability if the show bombs. Mr. Green? Mr. Green? Yeah. You, you need any help? Mm-mm. I, I just want you to know, I think, I think you're the best ever. Yeah, sure. Want my Coke? It's okay. You can have it. No, no. Really, you can have it. Okay. Those famous Mean Joe Green Coca-Cola commercials with Little Boy from 1979 are now the basis for a TV movie which airs this month. It's called The Steeler and the Pittsburgh Kid. In the commercial, Green of the Pittsburgh Steelers is injured and taken out of the game. A young boy, apparently upset Green is out of the game, goes down to the locker room and offers Green a Coke. Green then tosses the boy his jersey. Not sure how they're going to stretch that into a movie, but let's check it out. Actors Louis Gossett Jr. and Peter Barton are recovering from burns suffered while doing a scene for their new NBC series, The Powers of Matthew Starr. Barton, who plays Starr, a team with supernatural powers, lost his balance and fell backward on one of the several magnesium flares being used for lighting. Look out, Prince Charles and Diana. There's a new hot wedding this month. It's Luke and Laura on the ABC soap opera General Hospital. They tie the knot in one of the most watched weddings in television history, second only to that recent royal wedding. It's a continuing controversy for the hit at CBS sitcom House Calls. First, star Lynn Redgrave was fired earlier this year after insisting on bringing her newborn child to work to breastfeed. Now, main star Wayne Rogers announces he is done with the show after a breakdown in contract negotiations. Although the show receives high ratings, it would eventually be shut down in early 1982. Another popular show is Getting the Axe. After four successful seasons on CBS, the network is pulling the plug on The Incredible Hulk. Rising production costs were cited as the main reason for the network abruptly canceling the series. Seven episodes would air throughout the upcoming months in an abbreviated fifth season. HBO begins a 24-hour schedule, but just on the weekends. 
the TV rights to the highest grossing film of all time, 1977's Star Wars, is sold to CBS TV for $25 million to air the movie three times. Also this month, CBS is airing the network television premiere of the 1964 film Mary Poppins. Thursday, Mrs. Lemire is under the impression that you've been having an affair with her husband. Barney Miller. Me? I could be wrong. That. Louis thinks Elaine's new friend needs some help. There must be some doctor who specializes in... Taxi. Then, in a rare personal interview with Ronald Reagan at home on his ranch, as his Hollywood friends join in a Barbara Walters special 2020. Tomorrow, starting at 9, 8 central, and mounted on ABC. On Thanksgiving evening on ABC, join Barbara Walters for Ronald Reagan at Home on the Ranch. It's a first-time-ever tour of his spectacular ranch, Rancho Del Celio in California. The Reagan children and longtime friends of the president, including Pat O'Brien, Ginger Rogers, Patricia Neal, and George Murphy, reveal to Barbara Walters aspects of the man that only they know. Join Barbara Walters for his rare personal look at the president and his wife at Home on the Ranch. The top shows of the week ending November 15th, 1981 are Alice at number 5, One Day at a Time at number 4, at number 3 is The Jeffersons, 60 Minutes sits at number 2, and Dallas tops the weekly Nielsen ratings once again. The second single from Foreigner's fourth record sits at number four this week. Here is a British American rock band with the ballad, Waiting for a Girl Like You.
the song will mark a significant departure from the band's earlier singles, which were mid to upper tempo rock songs. The song also features Thomas Dolby on the synthesizers, a musician who would soon have a pretty decent solo career. Lots of great albums be released this month in time for the holiday season. Let's break it up into genres a little bit here. Who got these cassettes for Christmas back in 1981? In the New Wave section, find the second and ultimately final album by The Bugles, titled Adventures in Modern Recording. From the ashes of Joy Division, New Order has rose, and they released their debut album, Movement. Rock fans can pick up the latest from The Cars. Their fourth album is called Shake It Up. Rod Stewart is back with his 11th studio album, Tonight I'm Yours. Thin Lizzy releases Renegade, their 11th studio album. Ringo Starr's Stop and Smell the Roses would be his first release with his new label, RCA Records. Neil Young is in his experimental period, and the fans aren't that into his latest, Reactor. His fourth album with Crazy Horse would not be nearly as successful as his 70s work with the backing band. After a taste of success with last year's debut album, Joan Jett and the Blackhearts are back with I Love Rock and Roll. In addition to the title track, the album also features the cover of the Tommy James song Crimson and Clover, as well as the holiday classic Little Drummer Boy. I always thought that was weird. Metal act Black Sabbath was fronted by vocalist Ozzy Osbourne throughout the 1970s, but they had a falling out in 1979. Ozzy went solo, and Sabbath replaced him with Ronnie James Dio. This month, the two battle it out with their second album since the split. Black Sabbath releases Mob Rules, and Ozzy returns with Diary of a Madman. Just a few years ago, they wanted to rock and roll all night, but now it seems like Kiss is trying to be taken seriously with their ninth album, Music from the Elder. The album ditches the party anthems for orchestra arrangements and an epic concept, to the disdain of the majority of their fans worldwide. How bad can it be? Well, let's give it a shot. Here is some of Kiss trying to, well, do something. Here is their lead off track from the album. Let's see how much I can take of Just a Boy. Okay, uh, I, I like me some good kiss, but that, that is not some good kiss. <laughs> British rockers Slade are back with a great album title, Till Death Do Us Part. Although 1980's Back in Black might overshadow this era of ACDC's career, their second album with new singer Brian Johnson, For Those About to Rock, We Salute You, was also a critical and commercial success. Lock Up Your Daughters, Motley Crue has officially broke on the scene with their self-released debut album, Too Fast for Love. This print would only see 900 copies on the band's original label, Leather Records. Electra Records would sign the band in 1982 and release a new version of this debut. Here is a little bit of MTV coverage of this up-and-coming act. Look out, Van Halen. Here comes Motley Crue. The band recently showcased their act at the Roxy Theater in Los Angeles, and the crowd loved them. MTV Music Television was at the scene to talk with the Glitter Group. I'm not a teeny bopper by no means yeah. on stage. Yeah. I mean, just the pretty look, or whatever you want to call it, it's just happened. It wasn't really planned. And that sometimes may be a little bit against us, but the music kind of speaks for itself. Motley Crue predicts that they're rock and roll's new fashion trendsetters. It's already <laughs> it's started here. <laughs> In LA, it's happening. There's people walking around everywhere with the same haircuts, the same look. Let's see that at our show tonight. Take a look. Yeah, they all show up at the shows with the hair. And the... I mean, anything different is going to catch on, right? A few people cut off their hair like Sex Pistols and rebelled against that. And look at it caught on. From Los Angeles with Motley Crue, this is Tony Kilbert for MTV Music Television. They're just graduating high school, and young punk rockers Bad Religion released their first album, a self-titled EP. 
is also the first release from Epitaph Records, a new label formed by Bad Religion guitarist Brett Gerwitz. Epitaph Records would become a huge indie label throughout the years, releasing albums by The Vandals, No Effects, The Offspring, Weezer, Social Distortion, and dozens more. ABBA returns with their eighth studio album, The Visitors. In time for the holiday season, the compilation albums are rolling in, including Barbara Streisand, Ted Nugent, Pink Floyd, David Bowie, Anne Murray, The Blues Brothers, The Jacksons, and the greatest hits album by Queen. They were hot in the 70s, now disco R&B band Chick return with their fifth album, Take It Off. Earth, Wind & Fire are back on the scene with their 11th album, titled Rays. The album would top the Billboard R&B Albums Chart. Let's get a little funky with some Earth, Wind and Fire. Here is Lady Sun. <laughs> with asteroids to new Atari home video game, he and the rest of the family do nothing but play asteroids. Luno says asteroids is good practice for his interplanetary life. Bitty bitty, bitty bitty. Tell me, dear Atari Anonymous, with everybody hooked on asteroids, what on earth is a poor Martian mother to do? New Atari Asteroids, now available for your home. 
Number three. Prior to her breakout role in the 1978 film Grease, Olivia Newton-John had been known to many country, pop, and adult contemporary music fans. But inspired by the transformation of her film character Sandy from a goody-goody to a spandex and leather-clad badass, Newton-John applied this to her own image, trading in her previous musical styles for a sexier and more aggressive pop image. With the release of Totally Hot and the Xanadu soundtrack, she found greater success than ever. Now she returns with her ninth studio album, Physical, her first to not have any country music songs. Will the fans accept this new sound from her? Well, the first single, the title track, is already up to number three. Here is Olivia Newton-John with Physical. That's Physical by Olivia Newton-John at number three this week. The suggestive lyrics, which caused the song to be banned in some markets, helped the Australian singer change her long, clean-cut image into a sexy, assertive persona. Let's take a look at who came and gone in November of 1981. Today's celebrities born this month include... NCIS actress Scotty Thompson, Susan Ketchy Watson of This Is Us, current Saturday Night Live cast members Nassim Pedrad and Vanessa Bayer, Alison Tolman of Fargo, Australian singer and actress Katie Miller Heidke, and Girls Aloud singers Kimberly Walsh and Sarah Harding. Those we lost this month include longtime Hollywood actor Jack Albertson died at the age of 74. Albert had had a long, successful film career, but is today perhaps best known for his role as Grandpa Joe in the 1971 film Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. 
Actor William Holden is found dead in his Santa Monica apartment. Later examiners say Holden, apparently drunk, fell and hit his head on a blunt object, dying from blood loss. Holden, an Oscar and Emmy winner, was one of the biggest box office draws of the 50s and 60s. His career took off when director Billy Wilder tapped him for the lead role in 1950's Sunset Boulevard, which he starred opposite Gloria Swanson and earned his first Oscar nomination. Holden and Wilder reunited for Stalag 17 three years later, and Holden would win his first Oscar. Interestingly, Holden was the best man at the wedding of Ronald and Nancy Reagan in 1952. At the time of his death, Holden, age 63, was in a nine-year relationship with actress Stephanie Powers of TV's Heart to Heart. And actress Natalie Wood drowns in an apparent exit off Catalina Island where she was spending the holiday weekend with husband Robert Wagner. The two had taken a friend, actor Christopher Walken, along in their yacht. Supposedly, the actress took the boat's dinghy out, and police speculated she slipped into the water. An investigation says there was, quote, much recreational drinking going on. Nellie Wood began her acting career as a child and became a successful Hollywood star as a young adult, receiving three Academy Award nominations before the age of 25. She starred in the classics Miracle on 34th Street, Rebel Without a Cause, and West Side Story. Wood, the mother of two with her husband, Robert Wagner, was 43 at the, her time of death. And as Hollywood mourns the death of a favorite star, our Pete Citroen will be along to review the remarkable career of Natalie Wood, dead now at the age of 43. And just hours ago, the medical report on her death was made public. Let's go now to the newsroom for that story and the rest of the day's news from Evan White. Evan? Rita, the Los Angeles coroner today is saying actress Natalie Wood was drunk when she apparently slipped into the ocean trying to board that small rubber boat. Miss Wood, a three-time Oscar nominee, was found dead shortly after dawn yesterday just off Santa Catalina Island. She'd been with her husband, actor Robert Wagner, and another actor, Christopher Walken. They'd gone on to the island for dinner Saturday night and then returned to the 55-foot yacht. But when they were there, apparently an argument broke out between the two men. Not serious or violent, but when Wagner finished and went to find his wife, he says she wasn't there. Well, the Los Angeles coroner today, Thomas Noguchi, says she was drunk. That alcohol was a 0.14%. Ultra Bright gets you noticed. Take Nurse Jackie M. She'd been on Dr. Phil W.'s case for months, but to Dr. Phil, Jackie was a blank X-ray. Then she discovered Ultra Bright. Ultra Bright white. Dynamite white. Dynamite fresh. It got Jackie noticed. The next day, Phil examined Jackie's smile. The rest is semi-private. Put Ultra Bright toothpaste on your case for a smile so white and breath so fresh, it'll get you noticed. Number two. Let's take a look at who's topping the Billboard album charts this week. At number five is Nine Tonight by Bob Seger and the Silver Bullet Band. Number four is The Police with Ghost in the Shell. Journey falls in number three with Escape. Foreigner's fourth album, number four, is at number two. <laughs> Got that. And at number one for the ninth week in a row... The Rolling Stones are topping the Billboard album charts with Tattoo You. However, their lead single just can't hit that elusive top spot on the singles chart. Peaking at number two this month is The Stones with Start Me Up.
Although it was held from the top of the Billboard Hot 100s, Start Me Up would see the number one spot on the mainstream rock singles chart. And it would sit at the top for a record-setting 13 straight weeks, a record which would stand until 1994 when Stone Temple Pilots' Interstate Love Song would break it with 15 weeks. With every episode, we take a moment to look back at a song that was quite popular back in its day, and it stood the test of time well, so much that we're sometimes surprised that the song didn't do as well as we imagined. It's our song that should have, but didn't. This month, a new young man have emerged on the scene with roots in the L.A. punk community. More after this. Tuesday, Joni's uncle shows up, and it's Phil Silvers. She's sweet. Is she adopted? Happy day. Then Lenny and Squiggy steal Hollywood's biggest award. I would like to thank my mother for making me possible. Laverne and Shirley. And a thief hits Janet's flower shop. Fill this up with green stuff. Three's Company. Then Monroe brings Thanksgiving dinner. I can't even eat it now that I met it. Too close for comfort. Tuesday night on ABC. How does she do it? Not a hair out of place. The difference is me. How does she do it? Her hair looks as soft and silky as her mink. The difference is mink. Introducing Mink Difference. It's different from any other hairspray. It puts a silky hold on your hair because it's enriched with precious mink oil in every drop. So your hair feels soft and silky, like mink. But it really keeps you in style. New Mink Difference. The new veal parmesan specialty sandwich at Burger King is mwah, delicioso. Oh, just wait until you see our new delicious specialty. Tasty tender meal, topped with sauce and cheese. Try it, try it, you'll love every bite. Go on, try it, delight your appetite. This father with sauce and dripping with cheese and loaded with veal. May I have a bite, please? No one can resist your parmesan as good as this. Make it special, make it burger. Wow, mink oil and veal at Burger King. What a different world we live in today. Although they started off as an L.A. punk band, this girl group developed a more pop-oriented sound for their debut album, Beauty and the Beat. And their first single, Our Lips Are Sealed, soared up the charts, peaking at number 20 this month. Here are the Go-Go's with Our Lips Are Sealed.
That's the Go-Go's with their first U.S. single, Our Lips Are Sealed. The song will reach the top five in Australia and Canada, but barely breaking the top 20 in the U.S. It would later be named by Rolling Stone magazine as one of the greatest pop songs of all time. Make it this month's song that should have, but didn't. Number one. It seems like everything Daryl Hall and John Oates touch in the early 80s rises straight to the top. And with their new album, Private Eyes, comes a new single. This one is the title track. With their third number one single, here is Daryl Hall and John Oates with Private Eyes. get a little bit personal here. I know I try not to do that, but this moment of Pop History part Pop History podcast marks the earliest distinct memory I have of listening to the American Top 40 countdown with Casey Kasem. I was just a young 8-year-old just kind of getting into music and I was cheering for Daryl Hall and John Oates to reach that number 1 spot with this new catchy song that I liked. The previous week, it was in the top 10, so I fought to stay awake to listen to that last hour of the four-hour-long American Top 40 radio show. I made it to the end, and when I found out that Private Eyes topped the charts, I turned up the radio and started dancing around the room at just before 10 p.m. on a Sunday night, much to the chagrin of my mother, who came in and told me to go to bed. Do you remember an early childhood moment when you were sucked in by pop culture? Let me know at pophistorypodcast at yahoo.com. That does it for another episode of Pop History Podcast. Thanks for listening, and tune in next time for the season finale. How will 1981 end? Will Hall & Oates keep the top spot? Keep listening to find out. 
Thanks for listening to Pop History Podcast. Please leave a review on iTunes, like us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, or email us at pophistorypodcast at yahoo.com. Your host and producer is Jay Jackson. Theme music by Jason Parkhurst. All other music used herein is the property of their respective songwriters, publishers, and recording companies, and are used within this podcast for historical and educational purposes. Pop History Podcast is copyright 2018.